We now move on to another rather grim case that's made national headlines, another case, I'm afraid, that seems to be a killing for the sake of it. The victim was 16-year-old Claire Tiltman, and she was picked, apparently, at random. Almost everyone you see in what follows, fire and ambulance crews, witnesses and friends, are the real people involved who've helped us to reenact events. Urban! She was in the fire brigade, the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, and uh, she made it quite clear she didn't want a nine-to-five job. She, she wanted to go in the fire brigade. Yeah. That that was her intention to go in the fire brigade. No one would change it. <laughs> she was a lovely kid, you know. It's, it's just such a shame. Claire, she's a good student. She always used to come to the sessions. She was always first here. She had a, an idea that firefighting was probably going to be what she wanted to do. There are other things within the fire brigade, but she really wanted to be out there fighting fires, possibly driving or even take promotion exams. She was very bright and very intelligent, so I would understand that she could very easily take her leading firefighters exam and pass and possibly be in charge of a fire appliance. It was the final day of Claire's mock GCSE exams. She'd been back? sitting school tests for a fortnight and was looking forward to an evening without pressure. Here, drink this. Good luck with that exam. Huh? All right, Claire, how are you doing? All right. Have I told you? I've got a job down Pizza Hut. Oh, great. I was going to pop round later and talk about college and that. Oh, brilliant. I'm on the time, Peter. Oh, maybe I won't bother then. It's only for an hour. Yeah, all right. Come round tonight. The exams was the last day. She'd done quite well in them, actually. Cause she wasn't a particular scholar, but she did work hard and she'd done very well. All right. How did it go? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, I did quite well, I think. I did, didn't I? Yeah, good. good. Oh, yeah, can I pop down and see Vicky later? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, I want to talk to her about college and all that. Yeah, she's got in. Yeah, yeah right. she's yeah. really thrilled. Oh, yeah. good. Claire, are you sure you don't want to lift down? No, it's all right. I want to do my hair first anyway. Follow then. All right, bye. See ya. Normally, I would have run her up there and possibly even Heather bring her back because mm. his car had been stolen, so he had my car, like, for work. Claire had a mile to walk to Vicky's home. Were you driving down the A226, here called the London Road, through Greenhithe, Kent, between Dartford and Gravesend? It's six o'clock on Monday a month ago, Monday the 18th of January. I often go jogging along the London Road towards Holmes Cross when I first noticed Claire walking towards me. On my way home along the same London road, I again noticed Claire in the distance, just walking towards the traffic lights at uh, the railway hotel. Just before the traffic lights, she walked out towards the main road as if she was going to cross, thus causing me to run in the road. Um, the thing that struck me afterwards that I thought to myself, oh, thank you for letting me run in the road. It's not clear why Claire went into this alley. Maybe she was forced here. Did you see anyone nearby? You come down Providence Street, into Station Road, up towards the traffic lights. I see this car is parked in a very stupid place, half on, half off the curb, right on the traffic lights. And then this young girl come charging out this alley. I remember thinking, bloody kids. After hearing on the news about a young girl being killed and everything, I suddenly realised, suddenly dawned on me that that stupid girl who nearly ran on the road last night was Claire Tilton. About 30 seconds later, Michael Godfrey was turning onto London Road. What's that, Ron? Looks like a person. Yeah, it's probably a pile of rubbish. No, it's a person. I'm going to stop. The 
because she was against a wall. It looked as though it was a hit-and-run car accident. Um, the obvious thing, it's right by a road. Ron, my passenger, uh, went off and got an ambulance. Now, um, I've uh, used first aid before, but never to that extent. She, she just didn't respond. Um, and I continued that until the ambulance arrived, and they then took over. Not responded, there's no pulse. Vicky? Oh, hello. Uh, it's, it's Linda here. Uh, can you send Claire home? She's not there. Right. Okay, uh, I'll try Lisa. Thanks. I'm sure that Claire would have sensed that somebody was with her in that last moment. And I think that's quite important for her family to know that, that she wasn't on her own and uh, that she was with somebody and that they were caring for her. I used to play Paul. She took an interest in it. And all of a sudden, it seemed overnight, she just clicked. Because they wanted her to go in the competition like, yeah. on holiday, didn't they? But she wasn't old enough. Playing Paul, she was brilliant. Regularly beat me. No one likes to think their husband, boyfriend, son, any relative is capable of doing this. But to come forward, because I know that I would have to, because I don't think I could live with myself knowing what that person's done. And maybe he's capable of doing it again. Owen Taylor, that must be your fear. This guy's going to do it again. Yes, it is. This was a particularly savage attack. Claire was stabbed several times with a, a large knife, and uh, I think there's every likelihood that this person could strike again. It's going to be terribly difficult for anybody who knows the offender, particularly if it is his mum or a girlfriend or, or somebody, to, to think it, it really could be him. I mean, what do you think they should look for? Firstly, does he live in the area, do you think? I, I think there's... In fact, I'm convinced that the person either lives in the area, has got connections in the area, or has lived in the area in the past. And I'm equally convinced that somebody in that local community knows who this person is or suspects who they are. And I would simply say to that person, can you honestly live with Claire Tiltman's murder on your conscience? And can you live with the thought that this person may well strike again? Now, you mentioned she'd been stabbed with a, with a very unusually large knife. It's not the sort of knife someone would sort of carry, like a little pen knife or anything. Is there a possibility this guy's got an obsession with knives, a fascination with them? Certainly couldn't rule that out. I mean, it, it was a large knife, and it's not the sort of thing you would normally carry around, say, for instance, to do at your normal day's work. And so it's an unusual weapon. Given perhaps to unpredictable violence, outbursts of aggression, which perhaps a girlfriend would have noticed. I think certainly after committing an offence as, as ferocious as this, his behaviour would have been abnormal. And someone close to him, a girlfriend, wife, mother, would actually notice a difference in the behaviour. Finally, just very quickly, that car parked so awkwardly at the traffic lights, you've got to find the driver of that, presumably. Very, very important to the inquiry, a very important witness, and we would like that person to come forward. OK, well, if that driver was you, or there's any way that you can help, particularly if you just think there is something there that clicks with someone you know, the number here, 081 Alternatively, there's a special incident room which has been set up tonight in Maidstone for crime watch calls. Take a special note of the number, please, because the line's already busy here, and it may be def difficult to get through. The number there is 0622 654 321. Very easy to remember. 0622 is the code for Maidstone, and then 654 321.